So first of all, you know, thank you very much for uh, having me personally. I'm you know quite excited about uh, you know, Web three uh, technology as such because it's a game changer, as you know, every one of us uh, here in the room now. And uh, I am uh, Vic Malyala. I am uh, the president for uh, Supermicro EMEA, as well as uh, I manage the worldwide uh, field applications engineering for Supermicro. I've been uh, in the company for over 13 years. And before that, I was an ASIC designer uh, developing multiple generations of chipsets. So, uh, you know, when I see the technologies coming together, it always uh, excites me quite, quite a bit. Um, so without further ado, so uh, I want to give in a brief uh, overview about Supermicro. So as a public company uh, that is uh, established in Silicon Valley back in 93, we got our name and fame from developing application optimized uh, server building blocks. That's how it started off, which basically uh, based on Intel uh, x86 servers at that time. And uh, over a period of time, we have evolved and we started focusing on complete solutions, fully integrated rack solutions and whatnot, Intel AMD based. Um, and uh, it's a company that we, expanded into other geos. So we have uh, office in Netherlands and we have uh, in Japan, uh, Korea and all that stuff. Um, we have about 4,500 people in the company and more than 50% of that is uh, engineering centric. Uh, we are one of the top five in terms of unit shipments for the server industry in x86. So um, this is like uh, uh, some data that I'm presenting from IDC. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, Supermicro as a company, we work very closely with our partners, whether it is uh, related to uh, our channel partners that are taking our solutions and enabling the customers or customers that are taking our products directly. So what uh, IDC recognizes is the ones that goes in as Supermicro branded. So that's why you see the number around like 4.9%, but realistically it's uh, between eight and 9% with about 1.2 million units that we ship every year. Um, before we jump into uh, the crux of it, I want to give some background on what we are trying to do and why it is relevant to uh, this industry. Um, if you take a look at uh, the, our product line from Supermicro, uh, we have been investing in our product portfolio uh, to bring different variants of technology together. So at a very basic uh, level, we are talking about compute storage and networking and how we bring that uh, together. So when you take a look at uh, the platforms that are going into the data center side, uh, it ends up being uh, very high in efficiency and you need to have something that is highly performant uh, depending on the type of data center and what kind of workloads that we need to be uh, working on, uh, it could be a standard 1U or a 2U pizza box, or you can have uh, multi nodes such as blades and whatnot. Uh, at the same time, uh, over a period of last seven or eight years, we are seeing a lot more adoption of accelerators. The accelerator could be FPGAs or it could be GPUs. So we needed uh, to bring them into the platforms. So a lot of platforms are developed to accommodate these accelerators. And in terms of storage, uh, it has evolved quite a bit from a SATA or SAS device in the past now to uh, NVMe, which is a de facto standard for high performance uh, you know, local storage. And we, at, at the same time, we also have uh, a need for people, um, you know, for the systems to be supporting both front and rear IO, depending on which, which kind of data centers it go to. Now, everyone of us talking about 5G, telco and, uh, you know, smart edge devices and whatnot, all these things require a small form factor. Uh, the systems are going to be potentially deployed uh, in, you know, away from a data center, but at the same time, they need to have the same availability and reliability of the systems that are going into the data center. So we kind of expand the portfolio from, you know, core to the edge and bringing the technology, but from, um, you know, from the lowest end of the processors to the highest end of the processors. And, uh, you know, it goes from there. Uh, depending on that, of course, enterprise or, you know, uh, high performance computing or hyper convergence, uh, so on and so forth. 
Um, here, I'm primarily focusing on the product portfolio that we have uh, developed based on AMD, uh, mainly because we have seen in the last uh, few years, uh, AMD has uh, changed the game by bringing a lot more processors, cores, and high performance uh, you know, in, in that. They were the first to bring PC Express Gen 4 uh, into the market. Um, so because of that, uh, certain platforms can actually take uh, much better advantage of it. Uh, I will get into the details as to why AMD that I'm talking about currently. But uh, when you take a look at these platforms, uh, what we started with is uh, the platforms that actually can support a dual socket, a lots and lots of memory. Uh, you, know, you know, it's about 32 DIMMs, for example. Uh, why? Because by having more number of DIMMs, one can actually get to a higher capacity memory, uh, higher memory uh, density in that. Uh, without having to go for a very high cost memory modules. Um, the ultra platforms is a classic example for that. And then when you, when you are looking at a single socket platforms, you can still have all the benefits, mainly because of uh, AMD processor, which is the Epic series, having 128 lanes of PCI Express. So this gives us the ability to have um, you know, more networking cards or more GPUs or more storage directly connect, connected to the processor. And um, there are reasons why uh, people will be using multi-node. They can bring a lot more density into the rack. So which is the reason we have either 2U uh, with four nodes or you know, 4U with eight nodes. And we also have a blade which supports 20 nodes in a 8U form factor. Um, accelerators is something that I mentioned. One of the things that we look at is um, how we bring the right balance. So we do have a dual socket platform that can support up to eight GPUs, but um, on the far left, is, far left is what you're seeing is a GPU platform. We call it a 2U2 node, where on a single socket, we are able to support uh, three GPUs. I'll get into the details in a sec. So now coming to you know, what, what we are here for. When we take a look at um, you know, the, the technology, how it's evolving, the web 1.0, we know that it's basically getting some data from a server onto your browser. It's as simple as that. Um, and as we... As we look into the web 2.0, which primarily we are, use, we are using for the most part, where we are talking about a bi-directional communication, uh, primarily from a centralized server. And we, we are able to do pretty much a lot of things. But then when you really want to have uh, moving to the web 3, which is where we are talking about a completely disaggregated uh, uh, components, which basically going to support us uh, to run all these new protocols that is needed um, and all the, all the technology that is required for us to um, take it to the next level. You know, single system in a single location is one thing versus uh, having peer-to-peer -peer communication, having multiple devices that is able to provide all the content that we want in an effective manner. Uh, that is where we are headed. And in order to do that, we need to figure out a way to get the rightly sized building block. You know, that actually can help us um, to build from that into any solution that we are looking for, uh, depending on the scale that we are going for. Um, so uh, this is a very quick, quick slide in here. And when we are looking at a compute, the compute can be a single or multi socket, as I mentioned, and a storage point of view, at one end of the spectrum, we are talking about very high performance parallel file system supported using NVMe all flash arrays. On the other end, we are talking about high capacity storages using the top loading uh, you know, storage, which can get to a petabyte type of storage in a single box, uh, which is not going to be great for performance, but it's going to help with capacity. In terms of uh, uh, accelerated platforms, uh, we are going to have a lot more GPUs. So in a product categorization point of view, compute storage, uh, accelerated uh, compute, and the edge devices. These are the four uh, broad categories that we are focusing on. Um, when, we, when we start applying these into what we can do with uh, uh, the, the requirements here, whenever we are looking at a standard uh, system deployment in an enterprise data center, we look at basic criteria. You know, what is the performance that is required? And, uh, what is the balance of the processor to the GPU 
uh, to the networking that is required. So in some cases, people want to have uh, all the GPUs to be hanging around, hanging on a single PCI root complex, or you can have something that need to focus on, that need to be connected to the processor uh, using the uh, PCI by 16. So you have uh, unrestricted uh, you know, bandwidth. Um, and once you have this balanced uh, system, then you're talking about what kind of software that need to run on it and how do we ensure that it is qualified. When you deploy systems at scale, the big issue that you will have is performance per watt and performance per dollar. Nobody wants to spend any more money than that they need to spend on something. But at the same time, people want to be running the systems more efficiently. You don't want to be spending your uh, you know, uh, your dollars on the cooling of this equipment, but you want it to have as efficient systems as possible. Um, form factor becomes an important thing. Most of the times people like this one U, two U pizza boxes because it's easy for a single person to handle it versus people who are having a lot more power and ability to handle the systems at scale can use multi-node systems. And that's where the density will come into picture. And environmental impact, you want to be developing these systems in a way where these guys will run for a long period of time, they don't break easily, and we will uh, consume less power, and we'll be able to reduce the PUE uh, close to 1.0 uh, to the best we can. And these are all the ones that will help with the environmental aspect of it. And when you deploy at scale, another thing also important is to be able to manage the systems easily, some kind of outer band management or in band management tools. When you are able to, uh, when you need to upgrade or downgrade systems, we'll be able to uh, have a way to do that very quickly. Uh, this all of it will come into the total cost of ownership. The thing about Filecoin is if you take a look at all the requirements for that, this is exactly the same as what is needed for the systems to be deployed uh, in a large scale in data centers. So this is the reason you know, why uh, the systems as they are used in a data center level, when it's sized right for this application, it's going to provide the best value and best performance. So what are we doing here? If you take a look at it, um, when we work with ESPA, the initial requirements were like, you know, hey, uh, we have all these different uh, hardware that we are working uh, and we have in a, like a building block, but we don't know necessarily what is most optimal. So in order to do that, we have to work together. And um, with the Filecoin, when we are implementing on our systems, we need to see um, the different phases of the compute. We are talking about the PC1, PC2, and the C2 uh, portions of it. And what we realized is that the PC1 is primarily compute uh, you know, intensive. So in which case we, can, we need as many cores that we can pack in a given uh, system and uh, on a given per node. But at the same time, when you have a lot more cores, you also need to have a lot more memory to support that. And in order to support bigger memory footprint, as I was mentioning, we ideally would like to have as many uh, memory slots as possible. So we can go for a lower capacity memory, which is cheaper, but still will be able to get a higher overall system level capacity. And you would like to have NVMe support. And this is how we started. So a single socket Epic 64 core and up to a terabyte of memory and getting three of the 3.84 terabyte uh, uh, NVMe devices and networking point of view at the very minimum at 10 gig is needed. And that's what we uh, put it together. As we go into the PC2 and uh, C2 phases, which is where um, we realize that, you know, having a GPU is important, but having more GPUs per processor will give us the ability to map it properly. So we pick this particular platform uh, which is a 2U2 node. Uh, the details are going to come in the next uh, slide or two. So where each of these uh, processors is mapped with up to three of the NVIDIA you know, RTX A5000 uh, GPUs, and um, which requires, you know, in a way we are able to support two of the 7.68 terabyte drives. And uh, with more networking is needed on that one, we are going with 25 gig as a network controller. So, so the system, you know, if you were to look into that, so let me see, uh, this is the first system. So uh, for, this, uh, for the first phase, so this particular one, um, why it's important, I kind of mentioned that, first of all, we wanted to have something that is cost effective. We don't want any more 
bells and whistles. We want something that exactly uh, optimized for that one. So we need to have a right mapping of a CPU to its memory. That is the first one, first and foremost thing, which we were able to get in this particular platform. Second one is um, today, based on the applications, we, you know, we are using three of the NVMe devices, but the system can actually support up to 10. So depending on what would potentially be needed in future, this is kind of future proof, but for now, three drives is sufficient, which is what is needed for the scratch space. And uh, built the, the 10, gigabit, 10 gigabit ethernet, um, you know, we can have an option to have a specific card if you want by using an add-on card, but the onboard itself, we have a dual 10 gig, which will uh, be more than sufficient uh, and in its enterprise centric uh, uh, controllers, which will actually be sufficient for this workload. And from the processor point of view, we are able to get support for the entire spectrum of the Epic processor family up to 64 cores. So that is the highest, so we are able to do that. And by having a 2DIM per channel, we are able to also reduce the cost of it. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the platform, uh, we call it the WIO. Um, and so the platform point of view, it, it can do you know, a lot, of, uh, uh, lot more uh, features wise, it has a lot more features, but optimizing uh, point of view, that's how we are able to get there. The second one we are talking about for the second and third phase is uh, for the PC2 and C2 phases, we wanted to be able to support GPUs. So this particular platform, I am uh, actually uh, quite excited about, mainly because the design of this platform is to support both uh, Epic, uh, as in, you know, for example, the third generation Epic is called Milan, we support that. But at the same time, this platform is also designed to support the third generation uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro, which gives higher frequency uh, per, per, per processor core. So for the, you know, within the same platform, you know, depending on what we are trying to accomplish, we'll be able to use uh, the Epic uh, or as well as the Threadripper Pro. So it's uh, compatible with both of them. And, uh, because we are able to put up to three GPUs, we would like to be able to have as much networking connectivity. So in this case, we have a PCIe Gen 4 by 16, which can actually get up to 200 gig uh, per NIC. Um, uh, in many cases, uh, you know, people tend to use 100 gig because it's uh, reasonable in terms of cost. Um, and this particular system, the way we design is, uh, it's a two nodes, one, you know, one in the top, one in the bottom, and the power is shared. So you can think about when you have redundancy, instead of having each node having its own two uh, power supplies, now we are sharing the same power across uh, two nodes. We are sharing uh, the cooling across two nodes, which improves the efficiency of the platform. Uh, the overall total, overall power consumption actually comes down because of that. So as I, went, as I was mentioning, one of the important things is to ensure that whatever the compute that we are doing is uh, energy efficient and uh, green friendly. This is what we are trying to you know, get from this particular platform. So these are the two, what uh, we have done. Uh, we, we kind of looked at multiple platforms and um, finally we figured out that these are the two platforms that are ideal for what we are trying to do in terms of getting the right bandwidth uh, the right balance of the compute, uh, the storage and the networking and the accelerators. Um, so where does it take us? Uh, if you take a look at, uh, if you take a look at uh, the, the development efforts, um, we want to be able to create, uh, you know, a solution that easy for people to adopt. So um, hardware is different from uh, the software in the sense People who are good at providing hardware, they may or may not know the software that well. Or the people who know how to use the software, they may not know the hardware aspect well. So we wanted to ensure that we are able to put these things together, validate it. So we are bringing the um, core competence from both teams and we are able to get a solution. Um, this is uh, going to have enterprise centric features. So one can actually take it and deploy at any scale. Um, second thing is, um, the technology is changing. As you can see, every year, year and a half, we are getting new processors. The networking is getting faster and whatnot. So we are able to take uh, the newer generation process from Intel and AMD, the latest GPUs from NVIDIA, and we are able to continue to validate. So we will, our hope is to improve the 
uh, performance per dollar and performance per watt generation over generation. So we're going to invest time in this one. The third one is uh, the Web3 technologies itself is evolving quite a bit and the workloads are going to change a lot more. So the goal of this is basically to continue to invest our time and effort in expanding the product portfolio that, uh, that is going to be optimized for the new and the emerging workloads in you know, Web3 space. And the fourth is to uh, collaborate with ESPA to enable more storage providers uh, in, this, in this system. Why? Because the whole idea of doing this is to ensure that one don't have to go through this overall exercise all over again. We wanted to make the adoption easy. We wanted to take the burden on ourselves to uh, run these uh, different workloads on this. And um, that way, one whoever wants to adopt these platforms and deploy it at any scale, uh, that's going to be easy. So this is where uh, I'm going to conclude this presentation. Uh, for, again, uh, thanks for this opportunity. The excitement for me comes because of how we are able to bring our hardware and our expertise in designing the hardware and make it applicable uh, to, uh, to, to Filecoin applications and make it easy for people to adopt it.